KPU confirms proposed landslide win in Indonesia among the unhappiest countries in Southeast Asia. What is that about? Stay tuned for details. Welcome to the latest news from Bali in Indonesia. This is March 20th, 2024, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? Right now, it is 31.2 degrees Celsius in Kampung Bugis, and the humidity is 70%. Wind speed is zero. And a half an hour ago, the wind, well, it just gusted up so strong, it lifted part of the sang, the roofing material, uh, my wife's warung, and what you could see it just going up and up and up. Fortunately, the wind died down. It lasted about 20 minutes, and she's got a guy repairing it right now so it doesn't blow away in the next one. But this is the third day in a row so far that we have not had any rain and so it's been nice to have things dry out here, and so we're ready. And according to the Meteorology Agency, I don't know if I said this last time, but we can expect a late dry season, depending on where you are in Indonesia. And here it could be as late as mid-June. So we'll just have to see how that's going to go. But Bali does need the rain, and... Government officials have been warning people to be prepared for another dry season like last year, just in case. Okay, a lot of news again, just like I said the other day, and uh, I'm only going to get through part of it here. The first one, the main story, KPU confirms Prabowo's landslide win. The General Elections Commission, that's KPU, has officially declared Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto the winner of the presidential election. The final tally showed that Prabowo and his running mate, Sarkarta Mayor Gibran, who is President Jokowi's eldest son, they secured 96.2 million votes or 58.6% of the total cast. The former governor of Jakarta, Anis, and his running mate, they got 40.9 million votes, 24.9%. And Ganjar Pernowo and his running mate got 27 million votes, or 16.5%. The losing candidate pairs are entitled to file challenges to the election results with the Constitutional Court within three days of the official announcement of the vote tally. And according to the news, both losing t teams are going to challenge the election, saying that it was rigged and unfair. And there was one story that said that they want a new election, but without the winning team being able to contest it. So how is that going to work out? I don't know. We'll find out. But as of now, we have a new president-elect and vice president-elect. Okay. And the second lead story, Indonesia among the unhappiest countries in Southeast Asia, according to a study. Indonesia comes in at number 80 on a list of the world's happiest countries, published on Wednesday as part of an annual United Nations sponsored study. In the World Happiness Report, Finland remains the happiest country in the world for the seventh straight year. All right, Finns. And Indonesia improved its position, going from 84 out of 109 countries to 80 this year. Indonesia's position on the list is far lower than its peers in Southeast Asia. Of ASEAN countries appearing on the list, Singapore was the highest at 30, Philippines 53rd position, Vietnam closely behind the Philippines with 54th, and Thailand and Malaysia lower with 58th and 59th. In the ASEAN region, Indonesia only scored better than Laos, which appeared at 94th position, and Myanmar at 118th position. The survey found that across Southeast Asia, there is an overall tendency for the level of happiness to regress with the steepest decline reported in Singapore. The 10 countries of Southeast Asia, with Indonesia the largest and Singapore the smallest, showed a declining structure of happiness across age groups and a gender difference favoring young females. That's interesting. The happiness ranking is based on individual self-assessment evaluations of life satisfaction, as well as GDP per capita, social support, health, life expectancy, freedom, generation, generosity, and corruption. Afghanistan... 
is at the bottom of the country surveyed. For the first time since the report was published more than a decade ago, the United States and Germany were not among the 20 happiest countries in the world. The U.S. was 23 and Germany was 24th. Costa Rica and Kuwait entered the top 20 at 12 and 13. The report noted that the happiest countries no longer include any of the world's largest countries. In the top 10 countries, only the Netherlands and Australia have populations over 15 million. In the whole of the top 20, only Canada and the UK have populations over 30 million. The sharpest decline in happiness since 2016 to 2010, Afghanistan, Lebanon, and Jordan, while the Eastern European countries, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Latvia, reported the biggest increases. So this is interesting. I always thought that Indonesia ranked higher up on these happiness ratings, uh, maybe a different one about well-being, I don't know, but 80th is not really a great position, I'm surprised. But the good news out of this is, I guess, that we went up four points, so we're in 80th instead of 84th. Maybe next year we'll get up into the 70s. Who knows? Okay, as you know, we've had really extreme weather here, and unfortunately, a number of deaths caused by the extreme weather among them, two foreigners who were buried in a landslide in the Tabanan district, and a number of Indonesians hit by falling trees, collapsing roofs. Uh, it's just bad weather. Overall, it's dangerous during this weather. But unfortunately, a lot of tourists don't understand that, uh, that trees just suddenly fall down, that there's suddenly a landslide. And so, this segment, Bali official urges tourism industry businesses to warn tourists about extreme weather. The head of the Bali Tourism Office, Pak Pamayun, urged Bali tourism industry players and businesses to warn tourism tourists about the prevailing extreme weather in the province. He said, they need to remind tourists to be careful not only during this season, but for operational standards all over. What the conditions is, for example, at Uluwatu, he said, and I saw a video the other day of waves at Uluwatu, wow, coming way up there. According to Pak Pamayun, reminding tourists of potential risk is important amid the extreme weather in the area. The extreme weather is in the form of high rainfall and strong winds. On March 13th, two foreigners died after being buried in the landslides, as I said, in Tabanan and some videos circulating on sh social media show high waves in Bali waters. And here, where we don't usually get high waves, we've had them. Tourists are usually disciplined, he said, if they are warned about bad weather. Pak Pumayun asked the tourism industry to obtain weather information from the Meteorology, Climatology, and Geophysical Agency, BMKG, talk about them a lot, especially regarding safe routes to destination areas. He said, communicate with the areas that will be visited, for example, Tanalat in Antabanan. Stakeholders, such as the Association of Indonesia Tours and Travel Agency, ASIDA, must have communication with other stakeholders as well, he said. Many foreign tourists, he noted, travel without a travel agent. Of course, that's, I think, the overwhelming majority. For this reason, he said, it's important for tourists to check weather updates via BMKG channels or other media. So, if you are wandering around the island, it's a good idea to check out the weather where you're going if you're going to go from one side of Bali to the other, especially if you are along the coastal roads where you can get waves coming up, high waves coming up onto the road, and up in the mountains where landslides are frequent during this time of the year, as well as anywhere where there are trees along the road. I saw a video yesterday of a couple days ago up in the Gitgit area, a tree just came right down and got the motorcycle driver. And I don't know if I mentioned this the other day or not, but uh, he seemed to be okay. So extreme weather, stay safe when you're traveling. And what are the other results besides safety issues about extreme weather? Well, a lot of videos on TikTok and on Instagram now talking about all the trash on the oceans and how Bali sucks compared to Thailand. I don't know, and Vietnam, always comparing Bali to Thailand and Vietnam. And 
What specifically have you been talking about? Well, crash tidal wave coats normally pristine Bali Beach. A tidal wave of plastic trash has left a normally pristine beach in Bali awash with garbage, a bleak annual event caused by the monsoons that's left tourists vexed and local officials scrambling to clean up. Indonesia has a mammoth marine waste problem ranking as one of the world's biggest contributors of plastic pollution and marine debris. Images showed Kedonganan Beach in Bali's popular Kuta area covered in discarded plastic bottles, cups, and packaging, much of which was driven towards Bali from other cities by prevailing monsoon winds and rains. I call on all people in Indonesia, don't litter in empty lands, don't throw rubbish off cliffs and rivers because it will end up in the sea and arrive at our beautiful beaches, said local environment agency official Anaka Gungdalam. Around 300 officers and six excavators were made available to help clear trash off the beach. And a local NGO was also helping out. For tourists, on whom much of the Bali economy depends, the garbage-strewn sands were a stark contrast to what they've seen in the travel brochures, and that's what you see in these negative videos. I came here because I heard that it was a very nice place to visit, but what I see is all of this plastic. It's a real disaster for me, said a French tourist. He said, it's impossible to stay here. I think I will never come back. Nearby, some locals picked through the plastic trash for recyclable materials, which can be sold for a few dollars. Each year, pounding rain wash away mountains of plastic waste from other cities and bulging rivers into the ocean, with some of it drifting for hundreds of kilometers ending up on Bali's beaches. The trash wave, trash wave is something that repeats on Kedonganan Beach and others in the area due to the monsoon rains and winds between November and March, according to Anakagung. Indonesia has pledged to reduce marine plastic waste by 70% by 2025, that's next year. Another tourist said, I think it's a horrible thing, and for tourists it's a reason why a lot do not visit Bali because of the trash, said a Russian tourist who's visited the island three times. He said, sometimes I see this on other beaches. While concerned about the trash problem, locals were confident that the beauty of their island, which attracts millions of visitors each year, would come to the fore once again. If the trash is clean, this place will be more beautiful to see and more people will come, according to a resident of the area. Anaka Gung called on tourists to be patient because the beach cannot be separated from the ocean. The rubbish that entered the sea came from all over the region, so we will clean it up, but it will take time. And it's very common this time of the year to blame Java for all of the trash. And the Java certainly contributes, but Bali contributes their own. As many people have said, people that have been here a long time know people throw their trash in the river. They throw their trash in the ocean. They throw their trash on the side of the roads, and it washes up here. When I was living in Subawa, in an area where there really are pristine beaches, Almost nobody there. Well, we used to go every weekend. It was only about two minutes from our house by car. During this time of the year, lots of trash there as well. And there was nobody there to throw trash in that part of Sumbawa. There was a couple of hotels, not very visited, very popularly visited, maybe I should say. Uh, and nobody living along the coast there. Everybody was living inland. But according to... A video I saw yesterday on TikTok by a guy who became famous or infamous for his viral video calling Bali poo. Um, <laughs> he posted a video, I don't know, I saw it yesterday for the first time. He's in Thailand now showing the beach where he is in Thailand saying, look at this beach, it's perfectly clean, everybody's enjoying it here, and then comparing it to the mess that we had in Kadonganan. And so I saw other ones as well, people saying don't go back to Bali. So hey, this time of the year, it is not a good time for the beaches, unfortunately. And it's not only Bali, but it is definitely Bali is one of the problems just like everything else. And as the article said, and I mentioned earlier, Indonesia is one of the largest polluters of the ocean. Okay, and what about traffic? Okay, traffic is another problem, right? So what do tourists complain about? They complain about junk all around, the dirtiness in the island, and potholes and broken sidewalks, 
and traffic. So the Ubud police are on the job. Ubud police control illegal parking. Joint personnel from the Ubud police, Guyanier, carried out control over illegal parking on the, in the Ubud area. A couple of days ago, on Monday, the parking control was carried out in the context of the 2024 uh, operation involving several, seven personnel led by the head of the Ubud police traffic unit. Members targeted Jalan Raya Ubud, Jalan Raya Hanuman, and Jalan Dewisita. We ticketed a total of 12 two-wheel vehicles, he said. Two vehicles were transported to the Ubud police headquarters, and we had the tires of five four-wheel vehicles flattened. Oh, okay. That is not something you're going to want to see. Maybe this will make people think twice about parking along the side of the road where they're not supposed to. According to the police inspector, he expressed his gratitude to the public who have begun to realize the importance of not parking their vehicles for smooth Uber traffic. He said, in the future, this activity will be carried out sustainably. He appealed to Uber residents as well as workers and tourists to obey the rules. He said, we've carried out outreach and have invited people to discuss this, and we've reached a joint agreement to curb illegal parking in the Ubud area. And just a quick mention, I'm not going to go through all of the different flights, but cheap flights during the Eid holiday. Eid holiday period, the Tempasar Jakarta promo tickets starting from 700,000 rupees. Welcoming the momentum of the 2024 Eid holiday, National Airline Group Indonesia and its subsidiary CityLink continue to be committed to providing various flight options for the public. One of these commitments is realized through the promotional program Labaran to Jakarta, which prevents special offers in the form of discounts up to 75% for a number of flight routes to Jakarta as if you want to go to Jakarta. In this Labaran to Jakarta event, Groot Indonesia and CityLink are providing at least 42,000 flight seats with ticket discounts up to 75% and other added values. This offer can be accessed by entering the promotion code LABARAN on the site and getting your tickets for the period from the 3rd to the 17th of April. Apart from providing discounts on flight tickets, the Labar and the Jakarta program also provides various added values such as welcome bonus Garuda miles, prepaid baggage discounts, Garuda shop discounts, seat selection discounts, and discounts on hotel bookings in Jakarta. So that's it for today. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. And I will see you next time.